tend to be a little bit worse. Okay then guys, hello and welcome to Clash of the Titans round 4 where we have got Loiza versus Love Cheng. Up to the north of the map, we do have RVK Loiza. He's playing in blue as the Goths. And down to the south in red, we've got CKF Love Cheng playing as the Goths also. The map, it's the Clash of the Titans map pack version 2, of course. But this is pretty much islands. Obviously, we can see right here two islands with the bonus islands, which don't exist in team islands. So islands it will be, and a Goths war as well. So going into this then, it's going to be, I don't know, these are going to be really, really good games. I think they might be a little bit close as well. Obviously, Loiza here managing to knock out Tim in round three of the tournament. And now after going into round four, uh, going to be up against Love Cheng, who is currently supposedly China's number two player. So definitely going to be a tough games for him. But at the same time, after beating Tim last week, I think Lois is probably going to be feeling pretty confident and uh, going to be, I don't know, really, really up for this this match, this set today. Obviously, it's a best of five, so uh, we will see the first to three wins go through to round five. And uh, map number one, as we said, Clash of the Titans map pack. Map number two will be the loser's home map. Map number three, the winner's home map. And then from there, we'll, I'll explain that later on if we get to that stage. I highly doubt we're going to see a 3-0 today, but who knows? This is AOC and, well, unless you're the Viper, anything can happen. Hopefully as well, we're not going to have too many pauses and the games will go without a hitch. Please let me know um, if the stream is laggy or whatever at any point. Uh, if it is, then turn down the video quality and it should fix some things. I'll try not to uh, move around the map too much. I'll try and click on the mini map as much as I can so that the stream quality doesn't go funny. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a good time. I'm up for a good time. <laughs> Alright, so uh, as anyway, we said, uh, map is going to be islands and at the moment i'd say love cheng with a really nice opportunity to do a back dock here we have a look at uh, his map uh, the fish back here in the in the corner of the map for, for love cheng gonna be a great position if he decides to dock on the back obviously gonna have a lot of deep fish there it's gonna be away from the front of the map as well which for him is uh is actually probably better because Loiza doesn't have that option available to him. Loiza has the option of docking on the back if he wants shore fish, but if he want docks on the front, he's also going to have a pretty tough time. There's not that many big fish on the front for him. So if Lupcheng decided to dock on the back, he could be in a really nice situation, especially if he plays it a little bit more defensively. He could go up to feudal with maybe five or even six fishing ships and go for a pretty big fish boom. Uh, well, maybe not such a big fish boom initially, but if he wins the water, certainly would be able to do that. Okay, uh, glad everybody's got a good stream quality. That's great. Okay, so uh, yeah, Love Chang then going to be in a good position here. I and mean, even if he docks on the front, if he docks to the left, he's going to have nice fish. But the placement of these two islands in the center of the map uh, does mean that, that for Loiza, going to have a pretty tough time getting big fish here, I think. Um, it seems like there's one, maybe two big fish close to him where he's docking there. Love Cheng, though, sticking his dock up on the front. Both of them very close indeed. But uh, Loiza getting his dock up slightly earlier. And he will discover that the fish are not to be. Love Cheng, even though he's docked on the front, slightly better fish for him. And right now as well, we can see him luring in while well, he was attempting to lure that boar in with his scout right there. And that boar just doesn't seem to want to have any of it. But there we go. Going to bring that in there. Save his villagers walking over. And of course, be as efficient as possible. I think there might be quite a bit of latency between these guys though. So micromanagement going to be slightly tough. Of course, Love Cheng being from China. Loiza being from the, well, Czech Republic. And that means there's quite a bit of distance between them. Does mean that there could be a little bit of latency between them as well. So when it comes to galley wars, we may see some interesting uh, kind of micro going on. We might not even see all that micro at all. So I'm kind of hoping 
that uh, the latency isn't too bad for them. Loija here, though, perhaps proving a point, as I say that, as he loses a villager outside of his TC to that boar. Really, really bad loss for him to take, especially in such a high-level game like this. Obviously, every second counts here, and for Loiza to lose a villager this early on, it's never an ideal thing at all, because, of course, if you consider how much resource that one villager could gather over its lifetime uh, in this game, uh, we could be talking about thousands of resources or hundreds of resources uh, and obviously that is lost Loiza has lost that right now so kind of unfortunate that he lost that and that could give Love Cheng a slight advantage going up to Feudal but then saying that they are both on the same population I think that's mostly due to Loiza having his dock slightly sooner though um, interesting I don't know yet. There we go. I was going to say Loiza's not lost his scout, but he did also use that to lure in a boar as well. Obviously, one wasn't able to do that with the second one as it was already on 10 health. So, this game then going to be pretty typical of galley rushing sort of build. We'll see them very quickly transition all of their villagers to wood and gold once they do get up to feudal. Loiza's clicked up. Love Cheng's clicked up as well. And Loiza has got his tiny, tiny speed advantage right here. Four ships for him. Four ships full of Cheng, and it's going to be pretty much identical standard uh, galley builds right now. But these islands are quite big, and uh, it could be possible for a landing to come in at some point. That's what I'm always hopeful for some kind of different kind of style, different play uh, with landings, if well, if possible. I would say though right here that uh, Love Cheng is gold, really not in the best position at all. Obviously, this one here with having quite a narrow island. Once Bodkin Arrow is researched and once War Galley is done, I imagine that this gold will be uh, hittable, harassable from both sides, which for Love Chain could be really bad if he loses the water. So it's really, really important for him that he does take the water here because both of these golds are looking pretty vulnerable right at the edge of the map here. If we have a look at uh, Loiza as well, his gold fairly close to this shoreline. This gold does look a little bit more protectable though, uh, but unfortunately a little bit of a bad position being next to this wood here. Just want to point out as well that any little freezes and lag spikes, that's actually uh, between the two players and not the stream. Um, there is a little bit of lag between these two guys, uh, I'm pretty sure of that, as the game kind of just seems to pause every now and then, uh, which is probably just because they have a little bit of a high latency together, well, with each other. So there we go, Loiza up to Feudal, Love Cheng just about to hit Feudal as well, and now we're going to see some of those galleys coming out. Loiza going to have a tiny advantage in terms of uh, galleys f well, coming out faster, but it won't make a difference because Love Cheng will be getting his galleys out as well, and it will be a fraction of a second after Love Cheng uh, Oh, sorry, Loiza has his out. So that's going to be pretty damn close. Question is, is it going to be three or four docks? Well, three initially, perhaps four a little bit later on. You've got to remember that Goth's not really uh, going to have any bonus on water here at all. So there's no, like, you know, Viking bonus where they have cheaper boats, which allows them to get that fourth dock a little bit sooner. No Celts either, obviously having that... Um, wood gathering bonus to help getting docks and ships out a little bit faster so we're not going to see any um any four dock really quickly and if they do go for that it's going to be pretty damn tough to keep production up as well as that obviously going to have to keep a close eye on when they're going for fletching <laughs> interesting here though Lois is sending his uh galleys all the way around love cheng's island not realizing that he's actually just a couple of meters away or i suppose in-game meters but neither of them knowing where their opponent is right now and Lois are going for a big trek all the way around the map which actually for love cheng could be really nice because if he just goes forwards right now and aims for these fishing ships he could take them out if he just gets a little bit aggressive and starts making a little bit of a push with these galleys of course neither of them know where each other is at this moment in time so i think they're both going to be a little bit cautious uh, of actually going out into the unknown and leaving their fishing ships undefended back at home Loiza though, scouting around Love Cheng's Island now, and he's going to be in with a pretty good idea of where his dock is once he gets up to this area. Obviously, not seeing it at the back does mean that it will be on the front, and, you know, it's more common to see players uh, putting their docks up on the front on islands anyway. Still four villagers on gold each, but Loiza, sorry, Love Cheng now, sending over the fifth and sixth villager could be 
an indicator that he's going for the fourth dock in just a moment. In fact, he may just do that after this blacksmith, but certainly an indicator that Fletching will be on the way for Love Cheng very shortly. Loiza not adding in enough, a fifth villager to gold just yet, but he is starting to take berries right now. And he has got more berry collectors, I believe, than Love Cheng. So obviously, castle time going to be really crucial as well. Love Cheng, though, pushing forwards now, finding Loiza's dock. And I think Loiza's score at the moment is mostly down to the fact that he's got a lot more scouting than Love Cheng. A couple of galleys back here as well could actually find Love Cheng's fishing ships, and he will do. Nice, nice for Loiza here. Gonna pick these fishing ships off. The question is, will Loiza be able to protect his own? He is outnumbered over on this north side. So if he does take out these fishing ships from Love Cheng, that's gonna be a really big boost for him. At the same time, though, he could lose his own fishing ships because Love Cheng, very well aware of where he is, and Loiza is on the run. <laughs> Got to be very careful right now to not get outmassed, and Loiza has added in that fourth dock already, so that's kind of quick to get that up. And considering that he's, at the moment, only take four villagers on gold, I'm not sure why he's gone for the fourth dock just yet. We have a look at Love Cheng. He's just still on three for now, but his blacksmith is up and he will be, oh, he has got plus one done already. Uh, no blacksmith for Loiza just yet, so it's going to make it all that more difficult to micromanage against Love Cheng's ships. And in kind of this situation where you're going to have higher latency, that plus one attack and plus one range is going to be a real godsend for you. Obviously, at the moment, Love Cheng seemingly getting quite far ahead in terms of ship numbers. Loiza on 14 and Love Cheng on uh, 14. Interesting. It's It looks like Loiza has a lot less, but I guess he's got his military kind of split up a bit here. And at the moment, he had, has managed to take out one fishing ship from Love Cheng. Gonna lose that galley though, and a second one may just go down in a moment. But this is interesting. The fourth dock from Loiza, I don't think he's going to be able to sustain galleys from all four. And you can see he's got an idle dock right there. Uh, but he has actually relocated his fishing ships. So I guess that fourth dock, it is a little bit early. He's not really intending to make so many uh, galleys from it. But he is just using that to keep his fishing ship shape fishing ships safe and out of the way does seem though like he's kind of mismanaging his mic uh, micro mis mismanaging his eco here a little bit a lot of villagers bunched up on that berry patch there which is not good at all obviously blocking villagers is never ideal and it does mean that they are going to be less efficient in terms of gathering resources sixth villager now over on that gold for Loiza. So the production of four galleys at a time should be just about doable once that sixth villager gets over there. Love Cheng, however, still on the three docks for now. And I'm not sure if he knows Loiza has four. In fact, he does know Loiza has four docks. So he knows he's up against four docks. But at the same time, it looks like he's going to go for a faster castle. He's already seeding six farms right here. He's already just about to finish up his berries. And I'll be interested to see where these villagers actually go because I don't see a, a real ideal deer patch right here. Um, so Love Chang is going to get outmassed on the water if he sticks on the three docks. But he's kind of hoping, I think, that if he gets up to castle in a faster time, then he might just be able to take supremacy on the water. Uh, Loiza, however, still only... Well, no farms just yet. Just seeding his first farm right now. And, well, that's actually really bugged out. <laughs> that farm should not look like that because that's actually built. But Loiza are going to be starting to seed some farms right now. And he's going to have to do so pretty quickly because all these berries are just about to uh, wind up done. But Loiza with a transport ship. And I'm going to be interested to see if he can pull this one off because transporting into your opponent's base is very risky. However, you've got to remember, Love Cheng has lost his scout down here. Um, well, he did lose his scout. I believe it was one of Loiza's um, galleys that managed to take that out. So if Loiza can land and not get scouted, it could be in for a huge play um, as this game goes on. We'll see if he manages to pull anything off with that. Four villagers, or maybe even five it might send his scout, no, his scout's all the way down here. He might just send three, then maybe four. Yeah, three villagers going to go across. And let's see what he can do. Of course, he has got an idea of Love Cheng's island, but he hasn't scouted his gold positions. He doesn't know that Love Cheng 
is uh, sort of in the center of his island here. And I think if Loiza is going to do this transport, he's probably better off going right the way to the end of his island here, just to avoid being spotted. And I don't think here is going to be a good position. In fact, he's got to be careful because Lovechang is moving his army over in this direction. But Loiza is going to sneak by. He's going to slip by for now. And it looks like that position is going to be great uh, for him to actually take. He's really low on galleys right now, though, I think. 23 ships for Loiza, 27 for Lovecheng. And Lovecheng is going to come straight in here. And I think that Loiza may just end up losing a lot of galleys if he's not careful. Lovecheng also up to castle. Loiza still in feudal. And if uh, Lovecheng takes this battle quite well then he is going to be in a great position going into the Castle Age. Obviously, as I say, Loiza seeding those farms much later, not enabling, enabling him to get up to the Castle Age so soon. And Lovecheng here could be in a really nice position. Of course, at the same time, we have got a landing coming in from Loiza down at the south of the map, and that could really, really turn, turn it around for him. It all depends if uh, Lovecheng manages to wall up quickly enough. But if Loiza comes in here with some archers... Um, he could do huge damage to Lovecheng Zico. He could push him off of gold entirely. And Lovecheng would be forced to really slow down his galley production. Maybe even um, delay uh, the war galley upgrade. So if Loiza manages to pull that off, it could work out really well for him. Still, I think creating galleys from all four docks. But his castle age time is going to be terrible in comparison to Lovecheng. I think Lovecheng, though, probably going to be suspecting something's up when he realizes that Loiza is so slow to get up to Castle here. He's still not clicked up, and it will be still quite some time. He still only has four fishing ships and, of course, my, well, six farms, which is what Loiza had, uh, sorry, Lovecheng had a good five or six minutes ago. Loiza here, though, going to stick up a watchtower, and I think that might actually be out of range of this wood. So Lovecheng probably not going to know about the uh, uh, watchtower here. But of course, Loiza knows there's the wood. He's deleted it, realizing that that's too far away. Going to put that up right there, and he's going to force Lovecheng off of wood. Thing is, right now, Lovecheng, of course, he is upgraded to war galley. Plus two attack is done. And Loiza is going to be in for a tough time if these galleys can actually reach his gold here, for instance, and reach his farms. He can't afford to lose water in this map because their islands are so narrow. But the archers are coming in. The watchtower is going up and he needs to prevent this watchtower going up from Lovecheng here because if it does, then again, he is going to be in for a tougher time. But he can really disrupt Lovecheng's economy here. He can get these archers in. He can take out a lot of villagers. And Lovecheng is going to be forced to do something about it. He can't just let these archers reign free over his island. However, he has got the water. Pretty much got the water in his control right now. Loiza is still not clicked up to castle. He will do in just a second. In fact, right now he should click up, but it's going to be quite late, and it's going to be very tough for him to get back onto the water. Not to mention that, but if Lovecheng focuses down his TC, he could actually stop that Castle Age upgrade. I think Lovecheng could do that, and I, I don't know if he's actually going to do it now. It looks like he's going to focus down the TC, and that, if he does do that, is going to be huge. At the moment, though, attacking that house, I'm sure he can hit the TC from there, and he is going to do it. The question is now, is he going to be able to kill that TC before that upgrade is done? At the moment, it looks like he will. And if that TC goes down, it is GG for Loiza right here. There is no way he will be able to pull that back. Loiza doesn't have stone to build a tower. And the TC is going to go down by the looks of things. Which is so bad for Loiza right here. The Castle Age upgrade won't be completed. He doesn't have enough stone to build a new TC. And that has got to be GG right there. There is no way he can pull it back from losing his TC. There's the GG from Loiza and Lovecheng. Taking that game in a really, really unprecedented way. That is not something you see very often at all. But uh, you've got to admire Loiza here, trying for a landing. But losing the water when your island is so narrow, and losing the water when your TC is so close to the edge, it's you can't afford to do that. And I think Lovecheng did exactly the right thing by really focusing on the water there. Uh, but there we go. Loiza taking, or sorry, Lovecheng taking that first game, and really unfortunate for Loiza there, but I don't know, we'll see what he chooses for his home map, perhaps it'll be Arena again, and 